basic salary goes from 12,000 to 15,000. So that's what we are striking for now, to get better pay and a better, ter better terms and conditions. Lots of people come in to work even if they're not fit to fly because of course if you lose your trip then you will lose your allowances for the trip. I'm actually lucky, I live in a really nice area, uh, not far from the airport, you know, I live in Kingston with like, you know, and, and I'm lucky because I live with a friend of mine who is the owner of the house. So she, you know, I rent a room from, 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 from her and I only pay like 450 50 pounds and, and, and that's it. But if I had to rent the same room, in the same area, it would have been at least 800 pounds and I wouldn't have been able to afford to leave there. I would have to leave somewhere, maybe like an hour and a half, two hours driving from the airport and probably with another six or seven people. You've been up for like, I don't know, maybe like, I don't know, 16 hours. You've been flying all throughout the night. And when you go home, you want to sleep and you want to live in a nice, comfortable house, you know, not, not with like another like seven or eight people. You have a long commute, so sometimes you would pay more on petrol to drive back and forth to work. Eight hours juicy, you would get 24 pounds. So lots of people actually sleep in their cars, in most situations in petrol stations as well. You know, we haven't been at least involved with our requests and the company can afford, you know, our requests. Money, money, money! Out, out, out! Money, money, money! Out, out, out! Money! Out! Money, money, money! Out, out, out! They are making billions of pounds profit and forecasted profit of billions of pounds in the future. The CEO is making millions of pounds in bonuses. We was at ACAS for days and days and days and they made an offer but the offer wasn't recommended to our members and 70% of our members on the largest turnout we've had in a ballot rejected it. For some people it would have been £20 a month so we've met with a company last week to try and see if we can resolve it and we've said if you can improve on these parts that actually the company could well afford that we'd be prepared to put it back to the members with a recommendation if we could improve it because our members clearly fed back to us the parts they weren't happy with. And the company come back and said no. Now that deal has been taken off the table by British Airways and they've reimposed the deal that they had proposed previously which was rejected by 94% of people and they then tried to give that offer individually to people to get them to sign up for something that they've already rejected. They keep talking about pots and budgets and they're restricted and what they're restricted is by IAGs who's the holding company above the eight, they're greed and they're basically we smash unions, we don't care, we make profit and you know, you do as you're told. And so we negotiate with people who can't even really make the decision because they've got to go back to Willy Walsh. The company have obviously decided they want this dispute. They obviously don't care about the effect it's having on their customers. It's about management control. They don't like an organised workforce. They don't like having a union in mixed fleet. These were meant to be the low paid workers who would come in unorganised and was kept away from the trade union. We've had 800 join us since the 1st of November. We now have a branch of 2,800 hundred in mixed fleet and they're out on strike today en masse. It's been going fantastically well. Um, I don't think anyone expected the level of support that we've been getting not only from mixed fleet, fleet but also from our other um, colleagues that work in the airport, that's Eurofleet, um, worldwide and ground staff, bus drivers, everyone. As you can hear the support is huge so we're really really pleased with it and we hope that we'll be able to stand up and listen as a result. Some of our colleagues are getting paid a lot, they have better pay packages than us so that's one of the reasons why they feel our pain. actually offering uh, hot dogs, the career striking, we had people dropping off chocolate, sandwiches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
bread, Jim, yeah? Who wants cookies? We haven't had any negative comment from any of the people that have been past <laughs> us. So people are, people are obviously, obviously aware and people obviously think the same as us that we should be on higher pay packages. We've had a massive effect already on the company. We're hearing that they're relying on using Iberia for planes. They're using a plane company called Titan to try and get their planes off the ground. We know that um, a lot of flights are going with minimum crew. We've had certainly a lot of delays. BA have been quite clever with their statistics. So they're saying that they've been running a full operation on the day, but what they've done is cancel those flights before. So they're trying to make it look like we're not having the effect that we know we are. BA very much believe fear is a motivator. They set up all this project at Mixed Fleet without any union influence. They never sat with us to say about their absence management, about how they're managed, about any of their staff guides, any of that. So they locked it down in a culture of fear and bullying. Everyone here today that's taken part in industrial action will lose their staff travel concessions for a period of at least six months. In particular, the customer service managers stand to lose um, a lot because they're on performance-related pay. So they rely on an end-of-year bonus which is linked to their performance. And British Airways are saying that anybody who takes industrial action out of the customer service manager community will lose the totality of their bonus. So that's a lot, that's many thousands of pounds to some. And the problem is, is that the more successful we are here, there probably won't even be much of a bonus pot to pay out to these crew members anyway. So it's a shame that customer service managers are going into work for a bonus that is not contractual and they may not even receive. This is flying empty aircraft round the world. This is flying empty aircraft round the world. This is flying empty aircraft. Flying empty aircraft. Flying empty aircraft round the world. Having said that, the support that we have had from customer service managers is, is amazing. Despite what the BA propaganda saying that they were running a full operation yesterday, it's simply not true. You can stick a star trouble, stick a star trouble, stick a star trouble up your own, up your own. We can't afford it anyway. No, we can't afford it anyway. No, we can't afford it. Can't afford it. Can't Because this has turned into a protest in an area that isn't authorised at all. Okay? We weren't authorised to be up at the roundabout yesterday. We let you do your thing at the roundabout yesterday. And we said today, we would let you do the thing at the roundabout. However, we're, now, we're not on a roundabout, are you? Are we? No. I think we would agree. And that's protesting, isn't it? We're trying to help you because we want, we want you, we want you to do what you do. I will okay, we'll ask get... you to be removed from okay. Heathrow property. Okay. Now, when that happens, please listen carefully. Yes. Then it means that I will issue you with an order, a prohibition okay. order, that does not allow you back onto Heathrow property for anything up to 30 days. Okay. Now that, sure. for you and your colleagues, could potentially mean that you can't come into work. That there's sure. a maximum of 16 people protesting on the roundabout. Now the roundabout's up there. And I was very clear when I said that anything over 16, we, we will be removed or asked to leave the area. Okay. Okay, now, this, I think you'll agree, is it's not 16 people, it's okay. not on the roundabout and it's protest. This campaign isn't going away and BA need to realise this. This isn't a case of we have uh, a two-day dispute, they can try and claim it as an affected one and it goes away. This will carry on, you know, until we have a situation where we make a significant improvement to our members' offer that we can recommend. That's what we want. <laughs> That's what we want from, from, from really Walsh. We, we, we want a decent living wage. Um, as I said earlier, we, we're not unreasonable with our request. We just want a decent living, living wage. We don't want to struggle with our money and we want to be comfortable. The message here to British Airways and Willie Walsh is to come round to the negotiating table and to pay our colleagues a living wage and to treat them um, as they should be treated with dignity and respect as they would expect to treat their passengers.